Freddy was not trained in the operation of the lift and didn't understand its stability characteristics. And when he tried to forcibly pull the wires through some conduit, I thought I was doing him a favor by letting him use it. But now, he's dead. Freddie had no idea that pushing or pulling against objects while elevated can generate enough force to tip an elevated platform. This is just one example why operators must undergo specific training before being allowed to operate a lift. All operators must undergo general operator training. In this training, you will become familiar with the operator's manual, where it is stored, and the important information it contains. You will learn how to properly perform a pre-operational inspection, the location and purpose of all safety placards and decals, the operation and function of the various directional controls and safety devices, how to perform a route of travel and workplace inspection, and why it is important to do so as well as general safe operating procedures and practices to ensure the safety of both operators and pedestrians. Many of these general training topics will be covered in this program. However, you will also receive instruction on the operation of the specific type of lift that you will be using. Before becoming a certified operator, you will be required to operate the platform in the presence of a qualified person to demonstrate your proficiency using the equipment. One of the most important things to understand about aerial work platforms are the factors that affect stability. One factor 